I'm honored to be here, and uh, just a huge thank you to uh, Flynn Scientific. 20 years ago this year, they asked me to do the Flynn Evening of Chemistry for, it was 1993, it was for the 1994 um, convention that was in Kansas City. And that's where it all started for me, and since then I've just been overwhelmed um, with what a great organization Flynn is. Um, how many people have called up Flynn you know, sometime over the last year, let's say, and, okay, don't you get the feeling that they really respect the teacher and they really, I mean, that's something you don't always get. So big, big thank you to Flynn for inviting me out here. Um, but I did fib, I read the, all the publicity said I was gonna have a presentation on the teaching of chemistry. But as the, he just announced, I, I had the good fortune, amazing good fortune, of being selected in the 2011 um, Teacher of the Year for Missouri. And the best part of that was meeting a lot of the other teachers of the year, um, all over. I also got a chance to go out and present to groups that weren't necessarily chemistry teachers. <laughs> and so I started thinking about more of my philosophy of teaching, and I thought, you know what, I'm still gonna go out and show demonstrations, even to these non-science teachers, but I'm gonna try to integrate. And I really started thinking about a lot of the connections between the demonstrations and some of my philosophies of teaching. So that's what I'm gonna treat you guys to today. It, the slides and the demos combined, hopefully you'll find some good um, integration there. So this isn't about the, uh, whoop, let me turn this on real fast. It technically is not about the uh, teaching of chemistry, it's about the chemistry of teaching. And I know you guys are, you know, visualizing something like that. That's not what I, what I have in mind here, okay? So, I'm gonna dive right into these demos. And you saw this one, front and center. <clears throat> I already had a participant audience member come up and say, oh, I see you're doing that demonstration. That's worked for me, and all of a sudden it didn't work this year. So, you know, take it for what it is, but this is, um, uh, one I came up with years ago. I've got here a uh, Mylar balloon. A little bit of a breeze in here. I'm gonna have to deal with that for some of these demos, but um, okay. And it's been weighted here to make it just a little bit more dense. Can you all see that? I've also let some of the helium out. Uh, the way you do that, by the way, there's a little sleeve there and you can just stick a, like a plastic straw up in that sleeve. And once you got, it's like a little like a sleeve, and once you get past the end of that, it just, you can just squeeze it out, and then take the thing out, and it seals itself. So, you can do it again if you want to put some more in, or that's how they fill them, and that's how they can empty them, too. So I need a little bit of heat for this, and um, I'd use a Bunsen burner, or you could use a hot plate. And again, this is helium, not hydrogen, okay? <laughs> All the same, though, I'm gonna be putting it, wow, there's quite a, okay, right about here. If I can put my hand there, it's gonna be okay putting the balloon there. And um, the idea is just to warm it up some. And, oh boy, okay. You see it start to puff out then, yeah? As though I'm putting more in, but of course I'm not putting more in. Okay. And now that same balloon that was more dense is now magically less dense. How am I gonna get that down? Damn. <laughs> well, there's an expression, of course, what goes up must come down. I don't know if it'll get stuck up there or not. That's happened in presentations, but we'll find out. And I know I'm not going to have your attention until it comes back down. <laughs> no, it's just kind of camping out up there. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Sometimes it goes up and lands next to a spotlight and just stays there because it continues to be heated by that. But... Um, One-handed at the track, okay. <laughs> I do that demonstration for my students. Actually, I take that back. I don't do any of these demonstrations up here for my students. I have my students do them for the students. Something that a woman named Betty Bridges, who I think is here today, mentioned to me, there she is, ChemEd, I don't know, 93, way back, she says, how many, of these students, how many of these demonstrations do you have your students do? I said, what? They come up and help me? No, no, where you sit down and they get up and do them. I said, I don't know. Since then, I've been doing it every year. Every Tuesday, I've got students sticking around after school. It's part of their responsibility. One student from each of my five sections. <clears throat> and they learn the, the week's student demo. I give them the best ones. And they have to practice it, not only the show, but also the tell part of it. 
I usually have some prepared slideshow that goes along with it, but they really enjoy that part of it. And the second time they show it, they ask this very important question. They always have to ask questions of the class to make sure they're paying attention. What's happening right now to the mass of this balloon? Okay? And of course, we'll see if that maybe goes up all the way, I don't know. <laughs> Some students are saying, oh, mass is increasing. Wow, you know, it's getting bigger. It's getting more massive, dude. No, not quite. Others say, wait a second, you just saw it lift off. Of course the mass is decreasing. Is that when to go backstage? <laughs> I think so. Of course, we know the real answer. The mass is staying constant. It's a closed system. <laughs> Did it, it fell back there? Okay. That's just as well. Um, just something to think about. You know what? What really lifted that was nothing to do with the balloon. The balloon didn't lift itself. What actually lifted it? Air. The buoyant force. Which as it got larger, the buoyant force became greater. I love teaching Archimedes principle. I know it's not in anyone's you know, curriculum or state standards, but I think it's just such a nice unifying principle. And um, of course, the more air it displaces, the more weight it loses, right? We take air for granted, and with that in mind, um, I have a volunteer coming up, right? Oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry. I got to slow the slide. You're going to come up, Caitlin, right? In just a second. But here's what I meant by this. So, lesson for teachers from this. It is important for teachers to set the bar very low when they are teaching students to limbo dance. So, that's my philosophy. Actually, I believe in, and you, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but we hold our students to high standards. We're not going to water down our courses. And, um, so just not stopping at that, here's a fun thing to watch. Let's really probe at what's going on there. What's happening at the molecular level in that? Okay? And have some quotes to add in there. Good teaching is one-fourth preparation and three-fourths theater. <laughs> I could see that.